Are you ready for science? Because I know I am. Oh, this is thing a good thing? I don't know. I, I mean, this is just trying to be like an intro for this. Like, how do you even create an intro? I mean, like, I got the cool sciencey music going on in the background, but that's about, like all I got, man. Like, are are you ready for science? Like, maybe maybe I should like add a beaker. Let's add a beaker. Let's, let's add a beaker. That's just I don't know what that is. Let's just make it blue. See, look, science. That looks like kind of like a. If I have had, like an eye, fill in that eye. And I do this. I mean, that's science, right? Science right there. Anyway, yeah, this is the intro. Let's get on to it. New period. Uh, basically 1900s and over. There were lots of things. And this topic will first be about transportation and communication. Because both of those were some of the biggest things to advance in this century or more. Basically, in this century, we had a massive development of, let's draw a picture of one, of trains. I mean, trains were already around before then, but we also saw a massive development of them. Uh, that's a train. Go with it. And we also had mass production of cars. If I can ever draw a car. Let's just draw a nice, that's a car. Perfect. Look at that. We had trains, cars, and I I don't know how to draw an airplane, so that's an airplane. That's an airplane, everyone. So basically we had trains, cars, and airplanes. This reminds me of an old commercial with like a DVD about those. Yeah, we have trains, cars, and airplanes. The rain forms of transportation improved a lot. Like, in a plane, we can go around the world in less than two days. Well, let, let, let's look up the flight records. Fastest flight around the world. If I can ever spell. So... Wow, really? What is the world at this point? Oh, oh my god. No, none of these are. None of these. None of these. None of these are what I wanted. Normally Google. Okay, um. How long does it take to get around the world on an airplane? Okay. Ninety-six hours and twenty minutes. I don't know. Maybe it's two days. Maybe it's not. I have no clue anymore. But yeah, airplanes can get around the world within under a week. There, we can even get messages. Well, actually, after the next topic is communication. Instead of having like, let's see if I can draw one of these. Like, uh, this is a telegraph with like a thing. This is a telegraph instead of this. We now went to like. Let's just draw a monitor. We went to this. Well, actually, no, that's not, that's not accurate. We went to this. There, it's smaller. This smaller is better. Or no, is it bigger is better? I have no clue anymore. It's, and like in between, there, there was like. This. And like. Some in in this. These these were around for a long time. Then it went to this. Then it went to this. There was a few things in between those, and then it went to smartphones and stuff. Yeah, basically, with the adventures of transportation technology, information, people could just be transported around the world very fast, and like communication was faster than transportation. It was like, huh. You know my friend in China? Let's call him. One second. Beep, beep, boo, boo, beep. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Ming. Yeah, hi. Yeah, yeah that's all. Bye. And then, like, hey, Ming, I'm gonna come visit you. 
three days later. Hi Ming, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Like it just can be so fast. It's all like, it's all together. And to do, represent that, I'm going to draw everything in a big thing. There. So yeah, this period probably featured the most advancements in transportation and communication. No longer shall ye have to use horses. Now we use phones that are small. No longer shall we use horses to ride across the land or wagons. This half in my fiat go across the land. So a big thing today is a lot of new scientific discoveries or scientific theories that we have today. And honestly, I really still don't know much about these like in this period, or 1900s and above, just like the Big Bang Theory, the psychology is basically like understanding how humans do X or do Y, quantum mechanics, theories of relativity, and I really don't understand those. So I'll just explain one, and that is the Big Bang Theory. So, circle, circle, and then... Explosion mass and yeah, that's Big Bang Theory. Yeah, I don't really understand what, but it really has helped us understand the world. You're like, well, how does this work? Well, the universe was created when there was a Big Bang. And then, like, Mad or all the place has that theory, or why do humans act this way? Because of the, in psychology, which is what we named, what we named it. <laughs> it's like, well, humans do this because humans feel this about X and W and Z, while they do not feel anything about why or quantum mechanics like why does this work well if you then insert like a 10 minute explanation that i won't be doing here because i don't feel like making this one over an hour long hopefully less than 30 minutes and then like theory of relativity like so there was just a lot of stuff that made us understand more stuff which led to more questions yeah i don't really know what to say much about this they basically, like, we discovered more stuff that allowed us to know more stuff. That's a good explanation. That's it. Now, to really start off the discussion, we need to know what the Green Revolution is. It was basically when... So, basically, people from the industrialized world took their new technologies, their new industrial technologies that helped us farm in agriculture, and spread it all over the world to developing countries, basically, so, like, from first world to the third world, like... Let's just create a match trailer panel. Let's say there's blob 1, blob 2, blob 3, and blob 4. Now, blob 1, blob 2, I mean, is industrialized. They have all these cool technologies and such. They're like, they're pumping it out. All these ones are like, yeah, we're still ox and plow. No chance whatsoever of getting newer technologies. But then, like, Hey, why don't we send you some cool new technology? Like, oh, well, yeah, these will work. And eventually, they they now have that stuff. And now they can. Now, basically, the technology for like agriculture or an indus in industry altogether have a huge impact on that country with like population, amount of resources. Because now they have technology that like makes makes it better. Because before they may be able to plow a field in like a month, let's say. Now they can do it in two days. I can really rapidly increase the food production of like places. And that they also introduce things like uh, new grain, new fertilizer, fertilizers, pesticides to like get past off crops, and it really just improves the standard of living in the amount of food country produce so it could actually feed its people. Simpl and then like, uh, let's finish the diagram, and then it like spread to this one and this one, and then the entire world was green. Hooray! Green world! Everyone loves green. And green's a really cool color, but I personally think green. So next we're moving on to medicines like vaccines, antibiotics, and artificial body parts, or ABP as I am shortening it. Vaccines were a miraculous invention which saved 
countless, countless people from deadly diseases. They how they work is basically you inject it into someone's body in some form or way, like the flu one either has a nasal spray or a shot. I like the shot because nasal spray freaks me out a bit. Basically, it gives a weakened, a very, very weakened, or a dead version of like the virus or whatever it is, to the body, and it's like here, create antibodies. So and now you know how to fight it if it ever gets. So if it goes in your body, your body can immediately start producing antibodies to fight against it. Next is antibiotics, which is something that can very effectively kill bacteria because they're antibacteria really <laughs> now we have like many many antibiotics today and they're actually starting to not like bacteria are starting to learn how to fight off antibiotics because like maybe penicillin now can't kill the same bacteria it could 50 years ago as they have been over diagnosed in many countries like oh yeah you have the flu well, the patient is demanding an antibiotic for a virus. It won't work. But they just give in and they really shouldn't because that is decreasing the effectiveness of antibiotics. And I really hope that some company has like a bunch of antibiotics made that they're waiting to release when the ours now start just becoming completely just artificial body parts like an artificial heart or even uh, not, not even artificial body parts, but body part replacements like people getting new kidneys I mean you can survive on one kidney but just like uh, getting like a new kidney or a new lung or a new heart maybe new things on your eyes there's lots of things are like really about that and they really increase the human capacity to survive I mean there are many other medical inventions or medical things that have helped us, but these were three of the big main ones, and the three that are on my sheet, of course, that really help us out today and then, in the beginning. I mean, before it was like, yeah, sniff this herb, you'll feel better, and that was medicine before. So yeah, that's medicines. Well, what's the use of... Well, the next thing is about energy technologies and the use of oil and nuclear power and how they raised the production of material goods. So basically, imagine this. You have a big, big coal factory. What do you have to do to get it? You have to mine a crap ton of coal, transport that coal, put it in, and yeah. Well, what you can do with oil, you can pump it out of the ground right into a pipe right to the factory. Isn't that a lot easier? And it, and it produces a lot more electricity, I've heard. And nuclear power? That stuff can go on forever and ever and ever. Well, not, not forever, but for a pretty long time. So imagine having all of these different things. Like, yeah, this can keep going. Production can keep going. We don't need it to purchase as much, so now we can focus more on producing our product our goods, our materials. <clears throat> so yeah, with the availability of more power, like oil, nuclear. Uh, yep. Yeah. Increased amount of production because with the more electricity and the less you spend on it, the more you can generally produce because you don't have to spend as much as getting materials to power your electricity or buying it, etc. So let me let me draw a diagram. So basically here's what it is for coal. Like this is this is the ground. Here's the patch of coal. Then you have to dig it up. So then there's like a big hole in the ground and the coal's here. I can erase this. You go to dig for it. And then, like, ten days later, ten days, you have all of the coal out. It's, it's gone. Here, let's erase that again. 
So basically, all the coal, all the coal is gone. And then you have to transport it via like trains. Yay, pulse is successful, guys. You know. And then you have to give it to the power plant. It's like smoke. And then it has to go through electricity to here. This is a factory. Oh, I got my mouse. This is a factory. And I, look at that long process. It's oil. Oh, we have oil. Yeah, that's oil. I feel too lazy to do better pictures right now. And then, let's just put a big pump in. That's a pump. And then here's the oil. But then, pipeline goes all the way to the power place. Make stuff. And then it goes to the factory again. Well, nuclear energy. You have whatever way of so let's say that it that's it. Then it's still the same process, you mine it or whatever you do. And then you give it to then you transport it via truck or whatever. At the truck. Then you give it to the nuclear power plant. And then like for ten years. Oh, no, not like 15 years. Just powers the factory. And so you can really increase production like that with those different means of communication. I'm not communicating, transportation. Power. Yeah, power. That's the word I'm looking for. Yes, yeah, this is my worst one <laughs> of this entire video. So, next one is a very good topic even to today. How we all can test over natural resources that are finite in this earth. So basically, as the population of countries grow, it one what also grows the amount of materials for the country to grow, the country's needs. And I, don't know, I think this is also a good example of conflict, and it really should also be maybe it was there. I can't remember. So basically. Imagine that country A, this is country A, has, let's just say, 1,000, 1,000, uh, iron. That's a very good number. But country B over here only has 20 iron. And they're like, huh. And they, these guys have like 50%, but let's just... 50,000, 500,000 military. So all of these numbers make sense. And these guys have like 5,000 5, military. They're like, invade. And then there goes country A. Now these guys have not that much, but that much. Yeah, as we increasingly needed more resources for our countries, we constantly competed over them. We constantly drained places of natural resources. I mean, I know this isn't really natural resources, but look at the coral reefs. We used to have a lot of, quite a, quite a bit of it, but now, like, some places have shrunk to like less than 95% of what they were before, mainly due to tourists. And honestly, I think it's worth keeping coral reefs which take some pollutants out of our air instead of, well, we gotta see the pretty coral reef and then we gotta touch it, which actually kills the plant, or well, it makes it so it can't grow and that basically destroys the coral reef because we're tourists, you know. Yeah. That was like perfect.
Well, let's, let's also go on to the next one. Global warming, greenhouse gases, and pollution. Well, basically, with these finite resources, like coal, decided, hey, wanna know what? If we just put stuff into the air, they'll just go into the air and out of our world. Well, we have one pretty big problem with that, and it's called the atmosphere. Let's also draw, draw a diagram. Let's, let's just draw Earth. Let's just draw another ring around it. Let's just draw a tiny factory. And then this factory's like, Ooh, can we put the oh wait, it's filling up, it's filling up, it's filling up, it's filling up, it's filling up. Well crap, now when the sun goes into here, it can't escape back out. And then the world gets hotter. And as we release more and more pollution, we get hotter and hotter and hotter. And our air quality gets worse. People have to wear gas masks and stuff. Well, not, not gas masks, like breathing masks. Like, a really good example of this is, like, during, the, I think, the Chinese, Chinese, um, whatever Olympic that was in Asia a while ago, they basically stopped people from driving for, like, days. And their city went from, like, being surrounded in a gray cloud or gray haze to perfect clear yeah if we could do that like for every single country and solve many other problems we could make this country not polluted and may oh may maybe another good way is to make politicians on <clears throat> one specific side actually kind of see that oh maybe climate change or global warming maybe it's a real thing and not fake Maybe we shouldn't vote for those people. Huh. Oh well, who cares? We need to focus on those people all the way over in the Middle East. They're a big threat. They're gonna like blow up the world in like two two hours if we don't stop them. Yeah. Oh, what's the next one? Oh, water supply. This is what, yeah, basically, pollution or pollutants. They really threatened because another way we thought of like, well, we could put this in landfills. But why not put liquid in the river? Oh crap, man! A water supply—it's really bad now. We can't actually like, really pump out those out purifying it. Oh shoot! Well, that's not good. Yeah, they—they they didn't really have foresight for that. I guess let's pump stuff into the. Oh, now our air's dirty. Oh hey, guys, look at this. We need paper. Let's just cut down this for. We have no more trees. Okay, guys. Now that the earth is getting hotter. Oh wait, where did this desert come from? Basically, it's like, my heat, like, if an area really heats up, the vegetation there isn't going to survive unless it's, like, a plant that's been surviving in the desert forever, like a cactus. Mm. Iced tea. So basically, we kind of screwed up our world because capitalism. And... Communism. I was like, well, what is good? No, no, it was it was a lot of capitalism. I would say. Let's think about. Oh, it's on a global level. What did capitalist? What could capitalists do before? Well, whatever they wanted. Capitalism, man. They allowed you to do it. Could have a monopoly. You want to pour this stuff in the river? Do it. Pour these chemicals that are deadly to everyone in the river. Go ahead. But now, luckily, we have a few things against that. I wonder what political thing they came from. Eh, probably something communist. Okay, so, oh, I forgot to close this out. Oh well. <laughs> so basically, diseases, like, with, like poverty, like malaria, tuberculosis, cholera. Now, there's two main ones I know, is malaria and cholera. I mean, I know what tuberculosis is, but I don't think it's really super common as malaria and cholera. If that's even cholera, I think it's cholera. I don't know. But like, malaria, it's like, it's still a big thing. Because Africa, and there's a lot of mosquitoes in Africa, and that's the main way malaria spreads. And it's like, in the blood and stuff. And lots of people in Africa get it. And the thing that drives mosquitoes away is like, smoke, but like, we try to like, modernize them. Like, hey, hey, here's a non 
thatch house that doesn't catch on fire, but now you get more mosquitoes. But lots of people have been trying to help just like Bill Gates, he has been a big person helping the municipal area and stuff. And then there's cholera, which is basically polluted water supplies. It's basically when you take a big it basically comes from your poop. And that's a good way to describe it. If you poop in a river, there's a big possibility it's going to have cholera in it. And then so if someone drinks from that, they may get that cholera. So you see, you see what this is? It's basically pooping in water supplies. But then there are new things like the inf like influenza, which is basically the flu. Since the influenza. Ebola and AIDS, which all were bigger epidemics, which now actually kind of threaten modern countries more. I, well, not really Ebola. Ebola is still like an Africa thing that's. I, I don't really know. I think it's more under control than it was before. Like, but things like AIDS or HIV and influenza, the flu, they're still around in more modern countries. Because there's a reason we get a flu shot every year, it's because you have a pretty high chance of getting it if you don't. Well, not everyone will get the flu shot, but you really should. There's no harm in getting it. I mean, I don't think I'm dead or anything much is wrong with me. I'm getting flu shots for the past whatever many years. So just get them. I mean, it's better than having the flu than getting a shot in your arm. A little bit of pain for a few seconds or puking puking everything in your body up for a few days. You can tell it's what I'm going to choose. Or HIV and AIDS, which we still don't actually have a cure for in the modern society today. And it does still kill people. And I, I honestly don't know much about it. I just know it's like disease transported by bodily fluids. And mainly by more things of the sexual nature, let's just say. Basically, and also changing lifestyles and increased lung activity and how they led to a higher chance of certain diseases like diabetes because of our new lifestyle of eating weird mass-produced food and getting fat. Wow, I should work out sometime. Heart disease and Alzheimer's. I actually don't think Alzheimer's was very present before because we never lived long enough to get it. And someone did they it, they died, died soon enough for it not to matter anyways. So, well, I think a lot of these were still around then. But we, they, no one, no one had a lifestyle like it, too, which is exactly what it said right here. So, yeah. Yeah. Was birth control. And that was pretty good thing, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Depends on who you ask. If you ask Southern Bible Belt people, it's a bad thing. If you ask logical people, well... Yeah, if, no, if you ask a logical person, like if they well, I'm a logical person and I think birth control is bad, you're not a logical person. At all. You're stupid. So yeah. Birth control. Anyways. <laughs> it, yeah, really uh, had a big impact. Like, it transforms sexual practices, so... I mean... Humans are one of the few species... Which enjoys... Sexual... Means... And things. Like, it, like, dolphins also do, with like... Dead fish. And I'm not gonna get into that anyway, so... I'm <laughs> so yeah, it basically made safer ways of, maybe... Jobs involving... Things... Yeah, basically, it created a lot of jobs, birth control did. A lot better jobs. I mean, there were jobs before, but they all, they all, I also came with the chance of having a baby, which pretty much sucked and still sucks today, actually, having a baby at all. I mean, eh. Yeah, but it had to have a big impact on society. It lowered birth rates, so there were not as many families with 20-plus children. I had no idea why you want that many. That would be like, no, zero is... One is too many already. Zero is like the perfect number. Maybe negative one. A negative one would be kind of disturbing if you think about it. Never mind. Yeah, it had a big control impact on society because it created new jobs and such. Yeah. I just, this is a weird topic to talk about, honestly. Now let's talk about another one. 
military technologies. So yeah, basically... Oh yeah, we had this war before, like, 10,000 people died. But now we have, like, yeah, we had this war and over, like, 5 million died. And I thought because... And you could also say that's because we have, one, a larger population. But it's also because we have more weapons of mass destruction. I mean, if you take one arrow, shoot it into a city, you may not even kill anyone. But, well, if you take an atomic bomb and shoot it into a city, you gotta kill quite a lot of people, I think. Just, just It's just a possibility. I mean, if, <coughs> if you know a city that has had a atomic bomb launched and it big enough to wipe out big enough to, for its radius to be around the entire town no one died please tell me well also the city has to have people in it of course but yeah just please tell me like the comment section because I, I would be interested and also like oh yeah we have this cavalry battle okay everyone on that side died this one like yeah we have this we have this artillery battle we just killed out two entire cities worth of people because one we had a big population and two we had many more weapons of destruction like yeah we can just bu like in the vietnam war we can just bomb half the entire forest in vietnam with fire bombs and normal bombs and drop over 700,000 of them no problem well like 700,000 arrows would cost like well actually it's started doing how many people we killed in the Vietnam War? Maybe the arrows would have done better. Or not? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, basically because we had like... Mm, I'm gonna take another drink of tea. Mm. Iced tea. Yeah, this is basically just because we had more means of destruction and not swords, spears, and flint guns. We could kill more people. Of a bigger population. You wanna let this be my last one? So, let's draw like. So basically, let, let's just imagine scenarios. So I can I can do one last picture. So, here's a city. Let's say like fifty thousand people live here. You drop an atomic bomb on it, and it goes from fifty thousand. Two, five thousand eight hundred sixty-nine. <laughs> Sorry. Now, let's take another city. Now, this one is from like maybe let's, let's say the one thousands, one thousands. It has a population of ten thousand people. That's then. There's a singular. Then there's like a. Let's just say there's an army, this is an army of archers, they're like, woo! And then it has like a thing of, after like volleys and volleys, it still has 10,000, because they realized, we shot out a brick building. But then they increased their accuracy, and shoot out again, and then, okay, now, now, now we killed 9,300. Mm, yeah, there's a difference in terms and magnitude of destruction that we caused during these wars. I mean, one of them was with arrows, and one of them was with atomic bomb, like... But still, I'm pretty sure if you took, like, atomic bombs with the arrows, because the same destructive power, I'm still pretty sure the atomic bomb would do more, because one arrow misses, you're not going to kill as many people. <laughs> also, like, it's, like, a few trillion arrows is the power of... I don't know how you calculate that, I don't know. I don't have a drink of ice tea on this. If I can press the button.